Hello everyone, my name is Giulio Bellanti and I will be your host for today's webinar discussing the trends shaping sustainable PT packaging design for complex containers in low speed markets. I am responsible for business development across the Middle East in, and Asian markets for the edible oil, sources and dressings categories, as well as for converters. For those of you who are new to CDEL, welcome. We are leading provider of equipment, services, and complete solutions for packaging liquids, foods, home and personal care products in PET, can, glass, and other materials. We provide both medium to high speed solutions as well as low speed solutions through our brand Synergy, which is dedicated to serving the low speed market. The focus for this webinar will be on the low speed PET market, but just so as you know, we will also be running a similar webinar for the medium to high speed market. So watch out for that one also. Leading the discussion today are Benjamin Panchar, Global Packaging Insight Director at Mintel, Laurent Limar, Packaging Expert at Cidel, and Mr. VK Bahetti, Technical Director at Manjushri, a leading converter in India. Just before we get started, I have a couple of items to go over. If you have any questions for our panel, please type them into the question box below and hit the submit button. We will try to answer as many questions as time allows. If you experience any technical difficulties while viewing the webinar, please refresh your browser as this clears up most problems. If this doesn't help, then just type your issue into the help box and a member of our technical team will assist you. Finally, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you should see the presentations from today broadcast in PDF format for you to download and review at your convenience. Okay, with that cleared up, I would like to take you through the agenda for today's webinar. Benjamin from market research firm Mintel will take you through an update on the market, looking at the latest trends and consumer demands. Laurent will then follow with a deep dive into sustainable PT packaging and insights into the latest innovations in packaging design. After which, Mr. Bahetti from Converter Manjushri will share his experience with CDL low speed blow molding machines made by our Synergy brand. Then, we will close with some time for questions at the end of the session. Now, let's kick off today's webinar with our first speaker, Benjamin. Thanks, Julia, and thanks to Sidel for inviting me to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Benjamin Punchard, and I'm a packaging analyst for Mintel, a market research company. Uh, Mintel collects a number of data sources, so we have a global new products database. Uh, new products launch all over the world, we collect and we analyze and we also speak to the consumer. So we have consumer data and you'll see that within this presentation, which is around consumer trends impacting the packaging market, looking specifically at household personal care, oil and table sources in the Asia Pacific, Africa and Middle East regions. And so if we look at those markets um, straight off, um, on the left hand side, we have a chart here looking at launches in 2019 in core categories and looking at the percentage of those that were in PET bottles. And we can see that that um, is a very healthy story. Uh, in the top five categories here, we've got good use of PET, in fact, in dishwashing, soap and bath. We've got uh, over 50% of bottle launches were using PET as a material. Uh, and that is also a growth uh, story because in soap and bath products, for example, um, 2019 was the first year that it was more than half of launches, and that's increased from around 40%, 42% uh, in 2015. If we look to the other half of the screen, we can see that that growth story is actually replicated as a whole over the, the whole of the region and all of these categories. We can see that in terms of bottle launches, PET is the only material that's made sustained increases in percent of launches between 2015 and 2019. So it's certainly a material that's on the rise. And what we'll look at in this presentation is some of the trends that are driving uh, this uptake of PET. So what is it that consumers are looking for when they're buying uh, products? Well, particularly in, in um, personal care and, and household, fragrance is an important driver uh, for purchase. We can see, see here over half of Thai consumers uh, rate fragrance as an important factor when choosing soap, bath and shower products. But it's not just about um, something that consumers consider when they buy, but it's also something that we can use to excite the consumers. So 43% of Chinese laundry and fabric care users are interested in, a, in innovative fabrics. So it's something, for example, through limited edition, we can use to renovate and refresh on the shelf. 
It's also important in terms of communicating to the consumer that the a product has done its job, that it has efficacy. So um, we see that in things like the 37% of Indian consumers who think that post-wash fragrance is important as it means clothes are clean. So people are looking to fragrance, not just at the beginning of purchase as something um, that might sway them to buy one product over the other, but at the end of the purchase to understand whether that has actually um, delivered on the promise of the product. And we can see some interesting launches that leverage PET to communicate fragrance particularly well. We're seeing an emergence of, of novel fragrances around things like herbal claims. We can see on the left here a product from India um, using basil and parsley. And we see that transparent bottle really clearly communicating that green colour to communicate that sort of herbal positioning of that product. In the central example from Nigeria, we've got again an unusual com um, fragrance combination of cucumber and melon. And here that's uh, really been aligned really nicely with a functional bottle with a, with a closure, but that's got really uh, strong shaping to, to be really eye-catching on the shelf and show that, that faceted nature uh, of the bottle um, to be both uh, eye-catching but also tactile. And finally, the example from uh, Lebanon, papaya and passion fruit. Again, interesting novel flavours, um, inspiring uh, that, that purchase uptake and using that transparent uh, PET bottle to show the clarity and to communicate that scent through the colour of the product. So scent is really, really important. And that scent is often aligned with ingredients. Um, and we're seeing, a, a, on top of just a general importance of, of fragrance, a trend towards more natural fragrances, and that reflects a desire for more natural products. And that natural comes through in things like looking for free from products. So 63% of Nigerians are looking for free from harsh toxic chemicals when buying household cleaning products. So it's about moving to simpler products. We're seeing 57% uh, of those in the Philippines looking for natural ingredients when purchasing household cleaning products. So it's not just avoiding bad, it's looking for the good in the natural uh, product. So we can see that also in personal care, 57% of Thai hair care users also looking for natural ingredients. So that's across household and personal care. And I think PET does a really good job of communicating natural um, as well, because what we're looking at here is some examples of uh, launches making strong natural claims that use PET to show not just the colour of the product, because these are, are in some cases not just clear, but, but tinted, um, but it's about that transparency, that simpleness of the product uh, being reinforced by the simple clarity of the product. And we can see that, that eucalyptus product from Australia, making very uh, bold um, plant-based formula claims combined with a functional PET bottle that uses a lot of clarity so you can see the transparency of the product. What's really nice is that example from the middle there from Singapore, which is a plant-based shampoo uh, with a very uh, a high, good use of strongly shaped bottle there to communicate not just um, that natural positioning with that transparency, but through that shaping, a very premium positioning. So natural isn't always aligned with, with uh, purely ethical positioning. It can be aligned with premium. And we see that again in that final example from Myanmar um, of a extra virgin coconut oil. It's making um, processing claims around cold pressed, around 100% natural in a, in a transparent bottle that allows you to see the transparency of that uh, product uh, and, and that reinforces those transparent processing and transparent ingredient claims. A natural um, in terms of product aligns with that ethical claim coming through into uh, packaging and we're seeing sort of ethical claims around sustainability of packaging becoming more and more important. Uh, and in particular, we're seeing that growing around uh, the um, recycling um, claims. So 60% of Malaysians, for example, think that brands should use packaging that can be recycled. We've seen the majority of consumers th thinking that recyclable packaging is essentially sort of a baseline for what they're expecting from brands who are making sustainability claims. And obviously PET is a material that, that is both readily recyclable, but also uh, many have already uh, uh, recycled PET in terms of, of PET bottles in beverages. So that behavior is more normalized and well understood by consumers. We can see that not only is it an expectation, but consumers are, are, are sometimes willing to pay more. 46% of Chinese consumers who buy dishwashing liquid think that recycled packaging is worth paying more for. So there's a recognition that sometimes these things come at a cost, but that cost is, is something that consumers are willing to take up. What's really interesting to me is the high agreement with um, 
the um consumers wanting brands to use recycled material we see 47 percent of indonesians think that brands should use more recycled material so it's not just that beginning of life has the um the brand made some material uh, recyclable so that i can put it into the recycle bin but it's also recognizing that closed loop system and obviously pet is very well placed to um as a material for a closed loop system in terms of uh, a, a, recy a recyclable pet bottle being recycled back into a PET bottle. And we can see some really good examples here of, of um, products that are making strong recyclability claims uh, across the region. So in South Korea here, we're seeing a recyclable PET bottle with claims on back of pack, not just about the recyclability, but also how to recycle it in order to reinforce that behavior amongst consumers. On the right hand side from Bangladesh, we have in shower gel, again, a recyclable PET bottle that also bears the 1% for the planet logo. So looking at recyclability as part of a complete holistic message around the ethical positioning of the product. And interestingly, in the middle there from Cambodia, we've got a surface cleaner that is in a PET bottle that makes claims of using 50% post-consumer plastic. So we are seeing um, the, the emergence of products incorporating recycled uh, material and that, like I say, it, it enables the consumer both to recycle the product but feel validated in their recycling act activities because they can see the results coming back in terms of that material re being revisited in um, the bottles that, that they're buying. I want to touch momentarily on um, something that uh, is a, a trend that has been going on for, for a while, but a trend that has been exaggerated or enhanced by the, the uh, current COVID-19 pandemic. And that's the, uh, the move of consumers into shopping online. And there's a number of drivers for this. Obviously, we've seen uh, grocery shopping online increase, but as consumers are shunning bricks and mortars, uh, um, outlets, they're trying to spend less time in stores where obviously there is there are concerns about contamination. And as a result, they're moving to online shopping and not just online shopping with retailers. We're also seeing consumers increasingly um, willing to shop online directly with brands. So here we see some statistics, for example, in Thailand, almost 40 percent have increased the amount of online shopping they do because of COVID-19 about 30% similarly in Australia, and around 25% of Japanese consumers are increasing the amount of shopping they do online as a result of COVID-19. And obviously that has a really big impact on packaging because what we can start to do is we can start to recognize that there's an opportunity to uh, optimize our packaging for the um, e-commerce supply chain, but also recognize that, that this will change what consumers are looking for. Uh, in terms of uh, pack size and pack functionality. If we look at some examples of, of uh, recent packaging la launches to illustrate this, if we look to the left hand side here, this um, pe black peanut oil from China, it's in a large bottle, five litre pack. Now, as consumers are um, shopping online, one of the, the convenient aspects of that is the, the fact that they're not having to carry large containers from the, the shop to their home and more willing perhaps to, to move to larger pack sizes, such as these five litre pack. And this is a good example because it shows that we can move to larger sizes whilst maintaining strong branding, strong uh, aesthetic appeal in our packaging through, through uh, good shaping. So we've got nice shaping there. We've also got practicality through the handle um, whilst still facilitating that larger pack size. In the middle here, we're seeing um, a limited edition shampoo available only online. So we're seeing online shopping being um, used to create excitement amongst uh, shoppers and consumers as much as we might see in store. So we're seeing that, that um, uh, point of sale sort of uh, um, excitement move to the online world. We're also seeing, if we look to the right hand side, um, this uh, product from China, uh, a laundry detergent, which is in a PET bottle. And now PET particularly lends itself to e-commerce because it has that that very strong neck, which means that that closure is robust and is unlikely to, to leak, or certainly less likely to, to leak than, than other plastic materials. Um, and as we know, the e-commerce supply chain, that bottle will, will pass from person to person um, and from transport device to transport device in a way that doesn't happen uh, when uh, going to the retail store. And so it has to be robust in order to uh, pass through that, that e-commerce supply chain. But what we also need to re recognize is whatever we're offering to consumers, we need to do it at a price point that is relevant to them. And we can see that uh, consumers are looking for uh, or considering price, whilst also at the same time 
um, demanding that a packaging offers the convenience and practicalities that, that they require. We're seeing, for example, in, in India, 23% find it cost effective to buy products in large pack sizes. So uh, recognizing that not just single serve sachets, but sometimes bulk sizes can offer um, eco economic solutions. But we're also seeing that in, in South Africa, for example, 64% uh, look for saving money when cleaning the home. In, in China, 34% consider price a factor when purchasing in personal care. So price is, is something we need to, to consider, but price is not just the, 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 the price of the material, but it's the value um, of the product combined with the convenience. And there are various conveniences we can offer in order to convince consumers to, um, that the value is there. Obviously at the time of COVID-19, uh, we're, we're seeing in household care, convenience is coming through in terms of an expansion in cleaning um, requirements uh, and a move to on the go cleaning. So if on the left hand side here, we're seeing a spray that targets toys. So recognizing that um, things in the home that we may be touching a lot or may have a, a lot of handling are now areas of focus and we're looking to household care products to deliver solutions. And that middle example of an on-the-go gadget cleaner is a great example of something that we can use to clean keyboards or clean our phone, but it is also aligning with that on-the-go. So cleaning is moving from, from inside the home to out of the home. And we can see that general move of household from in-home to on-the-go in, in that final example uh, from South Korea of a portable fabric freshener. So we're seeing that rec recognition of the, the importance of some of these products that we might have considered that we only use in the home now being portable. We're also seeing some of the more general convenience um, attributes uh, that consumers uh, are recognizing across uh, a range of products being as important. So if we look on the left hand side here uh, in South Korea, a flavored oil in a spray bottle um, the PET again gives good clarity of the product, but the spray enables fast use and convenient use for maybe uh, a good uh, even application of the product. In the middle there from Tanzania, a, a dosing uh, bottle for uh, a, a cleaning product here. The bottle is uh, uh, has an automatic stop, so it doses a single dose. That means consumers know they're not using too much product, but also it means that they're they're getting that communication of value in terms of they're going to get the number of doses from this that the bottle advertises because that dosing is actually measured. And finally, on the right hand side, um, that foaming uh, um, hand wash, the foaming action really nicely communicated through that, that label pop up there. But what this does is not only does it provide some experiential and, and textual interest in the home, but also it's a very efficient way of, of dispensing the product so the consumer gets very efficient use uh, and value from that, that particular bottle. But we should also recognize the power of packaging to simply to excite and simply to provide value through um, attractiveness. And here we've, we've got some really nice examples of bottles that provide the, the kind of quality cues that, cons that consumers um, look for when trading up in the products that they buy. So on the left hand side here, we see a fairy a liquid using a coloured and textured bottle to premiumize and, and help to communicate a rose scent. The example in the middle I think is really nice because it combines a PET bottle with a full body sleeve that is only partially printed. So we have that full body decoration which is very attractive and eye catching but as it's only partially printed we still have that transparency. We can still investigate that product and um, give that the consumer that, that um, uh, ability to to connect whilst in store and finally uh, that the product from India using again a really nice a full body shrink sleeve but combining that with a, with a good coloring and a faceted uh, shaped bottle in order to really differentiate and stand out on shelf in order to premiumize uh, and offer a, a point of differentiation so in order to, uh, so it's finally to, to sort of sum up what we've seen we've seen some really um, strong trends here that are driving consumers within uh, home personal care and uh, and sources and oils in terms of the, the flavor or, or scent um, and um, what the the thing that really communicates particularly at point of, of purchase because obviously we cannot uh, uh, provide access to scent is through and um, coloring through design um, and things like transparency thing, things like shaping are really important in order to communicate to consumers uh, that the values um, of the the brand and the value of the product at that point of purchase. What we're also seeing is um, that consumers are, are really 
um, driving the need for packaging to uh, have a sustainable angle and that's really been focused around recyclability and so we're seeing recyclable and recycled packaging really growing and again PET really lends itself not just because it's a material that consumers understand as being recyclable um, but it's it's one that um, is readily collected and as we're seeing the growth of collection uh, organized collection in many of these markets it's a material that is definitely being targeted and finally we we have to recognize that we're in a unique uh, situation at the moment with the global pandemic and as a result what we're seeing is the use of what might have been household care style products on the go so we're we're considering our environment uh, and we're looking for fast acting efficient products that can help us to clean our homes and clean ourselves on the go in a way that makes us feel secure and makes us feel comf confident that we can go about our daily business so with that uh, thank you for your time and hand you back to our moderator thank you thanks benjamin for those insights i now hand over to laurent for a discussion on uh, sustainable PET packaging design innovation. Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you, Julio, for the introduction. I'm Laurent Lima, and I'm, I am packaging expert for South Asia Pacific at Seidel. I'm very pleased to be here today to present you sustainable PET packaging design for complex containers in low speed market. Let's move on the agenda of this presentation. You have noticed what Benjamin from Mintel was telling us about the growing use of PET compared to HDPE on other packaging solutions. Yes, in fact, market has changed during the last 15 years, moving step by step to PET. This growth is due to the advantage of PET offers, and we will see them in the first part of the presentation. Considering complex containers required, required in food, home, and personal care, we will have a look on some innovative packaging solutions. And then we will show how CDL can support you in your, your future packaging project. And now let's have a look on the first question. Why choosing PET as a packaging solution? Considering all aspects today, packaging cost is an important part for investment. Injection stretch blow molding is a solution because it gives huge opportunities for light weighting. It also offers competitive advantage for new formats as cost will be five times less than extrusion blow molding technology. In addition, PET does not require any foil on overcap. When we have a look on the TCO for the packaging solution, we can see that the price of packaging raw material represents 75%, whereas operating cost is only 25%. That's why it is important to understand the material cost and the potential of lightweight. On this slide, we can see how the price of PET is much more competitive than HDP. Look at this graph showing a resin price September 2019 to September 2020 in Europe. In orange, on the top, you can see the curve of our HDP compared with the red curve below for PET, the profile of the two curves is similar. PET decreasing slightly more for the last month, but what is the most important point is the difference of price. PET is 24% lower than HDP. Another important point for packaging costs is the packaging weight. PET offers opportunity to reduce a lot of the packaging weight up to 30%. Let's consider one example. In the res, in the, on the left box, you can see a multi-purpose cleaner, 500 milliliter, which was weighting 36.5 grams in the HDP and has been reduced to 27.7 grams in PET, meaning 24% of reduction. One more advantage, considering uh, injection stretch blow molding technology, a common neck can be used for different formats, giving opportunity to save cost for preforms and closure, and as well to benefit of equipment flexibility. Another example for oil with one liter and two liter bottle, we can reach respectively best in class, 14.5 grams for one liter and 37.5 grams for two liter. This represents up to 40% saving. This can be achieved with the PET design capability, base design, grip, uh, rib profile, and so on. 
Now we look at sustainability, advantages of the PET. The second more important aspect after the price. PET is 100% recyclable and recycled. PET is the only food grade closed loop plastic material, whereas LGP is not. You need to be prepared for the future, as some plastic will disappear because they are not sustainable. And just to summarize the three key pillars of development of Sidel, which are reduce, recycle, and reuse, the three of them answering sustainability purpose. Food safety is another PET advantage, very important for food as uh, ketchup, mayonnaise, uh, sauce, uh, creams. Uh. With PET, there is no need to consider aluminum foil. Preform injection ensure the dimensions of the on the quality of the neck. That's why the tightness neck and cap is very good. Closure will be sufficient to protect the product during chef life. On marketing side, PET allows a wide window for attractive design from small to big package size. We will see in the next slides some examples of bottles designed by Seidel and produced on Synergy Blower range, dedicated to low output range. On this one, you can see some examples of recent conversion from HGP to PET. For home care, like mosquito protection, dishwasher, soap, detergent, full sleeve, uh, stick sleeve, uh, and so on, uh, attractive design. Here are some examples for personal care, including as well some flat containers, shampoo, mousse wash, hand care. Then for food with containers up to five liters for oil, as well as oil, mayonnaise, ketchup. On the right side is a bottle uh, package not brown on the Synergy platform, can be. Another PET benefit is a great consumer experience it offers. First, PET containers ensure good tightness before and after opening, even with horizontal storage, to avoid any leakage. Second point, it allows a wide choice of natural gripping. We will present some solution later on for big uh, PET containers. For the production of PET containers, the industrial setup has a more compact footprint, whatever in standalone or integrated blow fill cap solution, compared with HGP production. Management of raw material preforms requires less storage. Operating a complete PET packaging line requires only two operators compared to a minimum of five operators for an HGP line. To finish, considering logistic and ending, PET is a safer solution. All these advantages are good reason why market is moving to PET. Now, let's have a look uh, to the side packaging solution for complex containers. Here we look at handles and grips, which are often used beyond one liter due to the product's weight. Of course, bottles with or without grips can be developed by Seidel and produced on all of our equipment, including recent on older platforms. As you see on the left, brown handle solutions do not require any specific system, never on the mold or the blower. To the right, we have clip-on handle solutions requiring an embedded mechanism inside the mold. How does it work? It's easy. As you can see here on the top right picture in gray, the mechanism uh, the moves the two orange lugs during blowing. These lugs match the profile of the handle uh, that you can see below it, so that it can be clipped into the bottle in a second step. We have several references of this system in Asia, North Africa, and India for 1.8, 2 liter, and 5 liter bottle size. On the right part, you can see the saving we achieved for Bielagro in India, we partnered to reduce their two liter bottle weight from 70 to 55 grams, roughly 20% weight reduction, corresponding to a saving of more than 400 K euro of PET per year. Solution showing by Benjamin as five liter in China with clip on handle in previous presentation is another example. Inspired by the best features of both grip and handles, Fit grip is a recent innovation from Seidel. This solution provides greater ergonomics for grabbing, pouring, and dosing. As you can see, fit grip shapes a deep profile design for ends along the bottle. 
with the possibility to be positioned in height or laterally to achieve the best fit for its purpose. This grip provides handling that it almost as good as a through handle but without the handle. Feed grip is more sustainable as it is, made of a single material for easier recycling on 100% RPT compliant. It is qualified inside it. We implement feed grip on our blower with a mechanism embed in each half, each half of the mold. Steady Edge is a packaging innovation with a specific base technology. Base over stroke system technology developed by Cidel is a great solution to improve base, defi base definition for flat containers. It improves stability of containers, a low premium look. Conversion from tin to PET for big containers allow to reduce weight up to 60%. It's offer packaging transparency. PET also contributes to get a stackable packaging to improve transportation and storage condition. At group level, we are able to answer to any packaging development request. Something that has been part of CIDEL reputation for many years now is our PET packaging expertise and our commitment to quality on all stages. CIDEL packaging Capability includes from packaging design to packaging feasibility test, from quality control to production start. We can provide also with bottle performance with computer simulation as finite element analysis uh, simulation, pilot mold manufacturing, bottle blowing and quality control. And we will be able to qualify your RPET and evaluate the impact it has on our packaging quality and process windows very soon. But also moving down to the bottom row of this slide, we also provide filling and conveying assessment on everything related for end of line configuration. In fact, we can accompany your project from A to Z if you need. Benefits of 40 years PT on blowing expertise. On our database today, we have more than 100,000 bottle on preform blowings. We draw 5,000 bottle on preform blowing per year. We achieve, uh, based on the marketing brief from customer, 200 art design study per year. We handle more than 100 finite element analysis study per year. And uh, we have an experienced team, 18 years, seniority average. To conclude, you can see some attractive CDL references for home, food, personal care worldwide. Five locations, including Pune in India for packaging development and equipment production. Here we are. We hope we answer some of your questions. I thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please use the chat and let us know. Thank you, Laurent, for those insights. Before we hear from Mr. Baheti on Manjushri's experience with Cidello's speed blow molding machine, let's take a quick look at the equipment itself in a short video. I'll now pass over to our final speaker, Mr. Baheti. Thanks, Julio. As we all know, COVID-19 has disrupted life. We knew about it 
It has had a nearly devastating effect on industry in general. It also threw up new challenges, new vistas, new demand in some select industries also, like packaging, like plastic processing uh, industry where we are in. By a sudden explosion in demand for personal healthcare products requiring packaging, there was a huge demand. And uh, we are happy to say that we rose, to the, rose up to the occasion and satisfied all our customers with uninterrupted supplies during the peak of COVID also. About myself, after completing my engineering from one of the most prestigious institutes in India, namely Bits Pilani, way back in the 70s, I straight away came into plastic processing field. So I have seen this industry grow in India and have practically handled all, all technologies, all materials. And I consider myself privileged to be associated with our company Manjushri Technopack Limited, practically from its nascent stage in digit packaging to its presently dominating stature with a turnover of nearly 1100 crores Indian rupees. A little bit about the company. So we are undisputed leaders in India with largest capacity of pre farms in practically whole of Southeast Asia. We have practically, we have been suppliers to practically all the industries wherever rigid packaging is required. With our strength in designing, prototyping, trials, we have been able to cater to all types of industries for all the requirements in digital packaging. Our range of packaging is quite vast, probably starting from 5 ml to nearly 50 liter. This is our story in numbers. Actually, two years back, Manjushri changed hands from owner-driven company to a professional company when advent of USA acquired controlling um, stakes. And we have then grown rapidly to nine manufacturing plants, which could go up to 15, 20 very shortly. As of date, we have a capacity of manufacturing 175,000 metric tons of plastic products. The rest of the things are there on the screen. We employ nearly 23,000 livelihoods are, you know, taken care of by our organization. Now, this is about our diverse product range from various technology platforms. Our largest vertical is pre-farms with more than 60,000 metric tons of capacity per annum. Uh, we are the largest in Southeast Asia not to talk of India alone. And then we are into ISBM single stage, two stage, PET ISBM, PP ISBM, uh, PET of all types of grades, various colors. We are into EBM, monolayer, multilayer, barrier uh, layers, in injection molding, regular, thin wall, by injection molding, we are into various kinds of dispensing systems, triggers, pumps, sprayers, regular caps, gift items, and also into collation film that is made from our three layer rifle nozzle uh, platform, extrusion platform. Apart from packaging, we are also into uh, area of lighting, uh, we make polycarbonate diffusers for well-known brands. And our latest addition is HDPP PCR manufacturing facility, so which has been started about six months back and we'll be producing about 6,000 tons per annum from this unit. This could be one of the many to come in future. Now, these are the brands we serve. 
If there is a brand worth its name, then we are there to add worth to its name. We serve all multinationals, Indian large companies, small companies, medium companies. So we serve the entire range of. This is a brief about our manufacturing strength in various technologies. The numbers have been mentioned. Capacities are massive, and we are adding uh, our capacities at a very rapid pace to uh, meet our target of taking our top line and bottom line to a multiple of three in next three four years. Our fill volumes are five ml to twenty liter as of now, and could go up to fifty liter or even seventy liter. Very shortly, so all types of reasons we have been processing, and our total number of machines are presently at about 350 numbers throughout our nine plants, and we can keep counting. Uh, now this is a glimpse of our personal care and home hygiene range, mainly from a few of the select customers. Actual range could be ten, twenty times larger than this. Now about our USP in personal and home care uh, area, because of our huge range in preforms, readily available preforms in various weights, various necks, as well as all types of dispensing systems, triggers, sprays. Regular caps. We were able to meet the explosion in the demand, which came all too suddenly for anybody's comfort. But we were able to satisfy all our customers more or less completely. We also, during this period, we also converted many packages, many packs from glass to PET because glass companies were not able to meet the demand. Even HD to PET because customer wanted their products to be seen. So we we rose up to the occasion. This is about uh, this is about what COVID nineteen uh, created in the area of personal care and home hygiene. People were very very concerned. As a matter of fact, they were scared of every contact. So. They wanted hand wash, disinfectants, sanitizers quickly to the market, and we rose to the equations as I told you. About our response to the growing demand, actually it was not a growing demand; it was an exploding demand. Everybody wanted bottles and containers and dispensers more or less immediately. Looking at the scarcity of materials in the marketplace. Since we have both the technology, ISPM single stage and two stage, and also EBM, but ISPM single stage would have taken a little longer. The 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 cost would have been a little higher. Since speed to market and and uh, various shapes were very important, we our our large range of preform. Weight categories and neck sizes and even dispensers, they helped us a lot. And we we exploited the two-stage technology to the hilt. We have our uh, in-house packaging development, R&D team, prototyping, and trialing teams. So everything helped. Contribution of Seidel to our growth has been immense. So we have been associated with Seidel right from the day. Still came to India. Our having in-house preform manufacturing capacity anyway helped us a lot. So whenever there was a requirement of faster production, higher volumes in shorter period, we we always dependent on Sidl, and Sidl gave us a very dependable technology machine with lower cost of uh, production. Higher speed of production, we could blow different shapes, we could blow different weights, 
and she will also help us in 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 wetting of designs uh, in making of molds though we had our we have our own mold making facility but sidl's contribution to our growth has been immense thank you everybody thank you mr bahati for that great presentation just before we head to the question and answer portion of today's webinar we'd like to give you the opportunity to have your say I now hand over to my colleague Joanna, our Marketing and Communications Director, who will take you through the poll and then move on to the Q&A. And thank you, Julio. Your poll question for today is, in your opinion, which pack size do you think would be most in demand as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic? And your answer options are A, small size bottles up to 1,000 milliliters, B, big size bottles, a thousand milliliters and above. C, sachets or D, pouches. And with that, it's now time to turn to the question and answers portion of today's webinar. If you have any questions for our panel, then please leave them in the questions box that you'll see at the bottom of the screen and hit submit. We will try and get to as many of those questions as time allows today. OK, let's have a look and see what we've got through. Let's see here. I can first off, we have a question from Dilip who asks Benjamin, what are the top three things that home care brands need to communicate through their packaging? Uh, thank you, Joanna. Um, I think that um, of, the, of the three things, the top thing would have to be uh, efficacy. Does the, the product do the job that the consumer has purchased it to do? Um, and obviously there's there's ways that we can communicate that through things like trigger sprays and, and uh, communicating functionality. But one thing that really builds trust and efficacy is branding. Uh, branding isn't just the logo on the pack. Branding comes through in terms of shaping, in terms of color, in terms of overall design. So we have to recognize the power of, of packaging, not just in terms of catching consumers' attention, but communicating those brand points that uh, really speak to efficacy. I think the second one would be um, convenience. Uh, convenience is re really important to consumers, particularly um, in terms of speed. So we're looking again for functionality in packaging, such as trigger sprays and ways of dosing, ways of ensuring the consumer can uh, reduce the number of steps between um, uh, first uh, accessing the product and delivering the, the final result. result. So uh, things that can, do, can assist in correct dosage or application, really important in that space. And I think the final one would be around, um, again, this unique position we were in in terms of COVID-19. We're seeing people are spending more time in the home, uh, are valuing the home environment in a way they haven't before. Uh, and so um, we're seeing that come through in terms of packaging design that is more attractive. So consumers are, are more comfortable having there's something that, that is on display and visible in the home. Uh, but also in terms of sense, it's having an impact because we're seeing consumers looking for things that are perhaps a little bit more around calming and relaxing um, uh, and de-stressing from the stressful position we find ourselves. So uh, that is um, a move away from maybe scents that communicate efficacy such as lemon to relaxing scents such as la lavender, which then aligns with softer colors, softer shaping around the pack, which can um, align with some of these sort of stress busting things that we're seeing emerging as a result of the pandemic. Thanks for that, Benjamin. I see we have a question here from Sarah, who would like to know, when you mention lightweighting, could you please clarify the way to lightweight the packaging? I think this one is for you, Laurent. Thank you for raising this question. Good question. Uh, there are different ways to lightweight PET package. Uh, first, 
we need to keep in mind package specification and uh, supply chain environment constraint as uh, storage and transportation. Uh, then we need to check with customers the best, op the best optimized platform available on the market to achieve the best uh, packaging performance. We can even design optimized preform if uh, needed. Uh, internally, we develop and optimize uh, bottle design for light weighting with new bottle base design, new with a new ribs profile or with new neck and uh, so on. Light weighting also helps, helps to uh, optimize energy saving as it requires less uh, heating in the oven and less uh, blowing pressure. Uh, as we can see in the presentation, light weighting is very important for TCO reduction, uh, which is 75% driven by the weight. Thanks, Laurent, for that. I see we have a question here from Tom, who asks, Mr. Behetti, what are the advantages of converting bottles from single-stage production to two-stage production using ISBM machines? Thanks, Joanna. It's a very relevant question to the present times. Um, as I told you earlier, there was an explosion in demand. The main requirements were speed to market, various shapes, various sizes. We couldn't have done that in our single stage. So we did cater to some of the requirements uh, from our vast range of single stage molds. Two stage was a big help. Further, our in-house designing, prototyping and all, they helped us a lot. And wherever we, we needed to, we were in confusion or doubt, SEAL team came forward and helped us a lot in making our designs, in making molds for us. And, and advantages are, as I've already repeated two, three times, speed to the market, light weighting, lower cost of production. Yeah, that's it. Just to remind everyone that any further questions you may have, please feel free to leave them in the questions box at the bottom of your screen. Our speakers would love to hear from you today. Okay, let's have a look. I see another one come through, this time from Mohammed. Looks like another one from for you, Benjamin. Um, which is more important, to be recyclable or to use recycled content? Uh, yes, thank you, Joanna. Um, very interesting question. I think um, right now, uh, obviously, the primary thing is to become recyclable. There's still a huge opportunity there because there's still a lot of packaging that's not recyclable. So that's still a chance to stand out. But it's something that we see that the majority of consumers just expect now brands to be recyclable. So really, it's it's more a case of of catching up rather than differentiating um, in the mind of many consumers. So if we don't move to recyclable packaging, are you gonna find yourself kind of left on the shelf? Particularly as we're seeing legislation increasingly emerge that is, is pushing in that, that direction. But that's not to say that a recyclable uh, or, or packaging that contains recycled products isn't, uh, packaging isn't important. Uh, if we look at, um, let's look at the consumer data, if I've got some in front of me here, um, let's choose Nigeria. Uh, so 59% want brands to use recyclable packaging, so the majority there, but also 43% want brands to use more recycled material in packaging. So that's really high, and that's that's a huge disconnect between that sort of almost half of consumers wanting uh, to see uh, recycled material being used in packaging, and the sort of two or three percent of launches that we're seeing actually sort of take that up. So there's a big opportunity to both show leadership by using recycled material and to align with those consumers' needs. So uh, short answer one, become recyclable is most important, but have a view on a route to including recycled material as you go forward. Thanks, Benjamin, for that. Let's have a look. I see a question here from Priyanka, who would like to know, Laurent, you speak about uh, development and FEA. Could you please explain more about FEA? Laurent, over to you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, finite element analysis allows us faster time to the market. Uh, finite element analysis is a tool we developed more than 10 years ago, inspired from aeronautics and the automotive industries. This virtual bottle testing helps us to anticipate uh, package behavior in terms of packaging condition, for instance, 
packaging expansion, uh, hydrostatic pressure, empty field top load, uh, gas pressure, lateral gripping, uh, field point drop simulation, and more. Today, simulation uh, results are closer and closer to real performance because we enrich uh, the FEA database with real uh, packaging performances. It's a real great tool for lightweighting. Thanks, Laurent, for that. I see a question here from Sanjay who would like to know, do you think the rise in on-the-go cleaning will last post-pandemic? Or is it here to stay? I believe this one is for Benjamin. Thanks, Joanna. Yes, yes, I think so. I think definitely we're going to see this behaviour sort of normalised. Uh, we know that that it's become so normalised that the vast majority of consumers are now sort of cleaning, uh, cleaning themselves on the go. If I look again at some consumer data I've got here, 63% of Thai consumers I report using more hand sanitizer sorry, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. So that kind of um, bringing cleaning products for myself and um, as an extension maybe of, of my gadgets and the phone and the things that I'm touching, and that's become a normalized activity. And it's not just the fact that consumers are doing, it's also that they've got more access to packaging that can facilitate that. So if we look um, historically on the go claims in launches in home care, obviously negligible about, I think, sort of a, a percentage at max in most years. But but over the past sort of year, six months, what we're seeing in home care in Asia Pacific, we've seen about 4% of launches making an on the go claim. So it is something that we're seeing um, is is being facilitated through packaging. And going forward, even if we have the vaccine and, and this current pandemic sort of comes to an end, um, this visibility of the fact that, that in many cases we're we're touching things like door handles, like banisters, um, and we're considering those as, in a new way. We're going to be wanting to protect our health and uh, clean those in a way that we haven't before. So on the go cleaning is going to become as normalized as um, on the go eating in terms of snacking has become and on the go uh, beauty in terms of applying makeup on the go. These are these are very normalized activity um, and that will be just the same uh, in household care going forward. Thanks, Benjamin, for that. I see a question here from Rohit this time, uh, which I believe is for Mr. Behetti again. How easy was it for you to convert from HDPE to PET? Uh, how were you able to change bottle designs quickly? Interesting questions. I do have answered part of it earlier. See, to, to convert HDP to PET is the is in the wish list of practically all customers sub, who are supplying home care, home hygiene, and personal care products. PET gives a great advantage where the product can be shown, is visible to the customer. One thing we needed to take care was the stability part of it, looking at various pH values and the nature of the product, chemical nature of the product. Most of the time we were very successful. Our in-house designing, prototyping, all that, all those things helped. And as I mentioned earlier, it came to our great help whenever it was needed. There's some special designs, right, which, uh, which we needed to be vetted by experts at Seidl. Seattle India with its state-of-the-art uh, technology center, having mold-making facility, having um, evaluation uh, facilities of shapes and bottles with regards to their use, they helped us a lot. Thank you, Mr. Behetti, for that. I think we have time for just one more question today. Let's see. This one seems like it's for Laurent. Uh, Laurent, when you mention sustainability, what actions are Sidel taking in the area of RPT? Good question and consideration. Sidel uh, is uh, fully involved in the new plastic circular economy. Uh, we sign a global commitment of Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Greenhouse gas reduction is our target. We have a sustainability program based on three pillars we mentioned previously. We design 
we use, uh, we cycle. We have, we already have more than uh, 20 years experience and knowledge to support our customer looking for RPET uh, solution. We can help them to qualify any RPET type up to 100%. Next year, we, pl we plan to open a lab facility close to industrial setup in France for RPET to assess different percentage of recycling PET. We can support our customers to define the right blowing process on their existing machine, which are capable to handle uh, air PET. I'm afraid it's uh, time's up for today's webinar. Um, if we didn't get round to answering your question, we'll be sure to reach out directly to follow up with you and to provide you with an answer. I would like to thank our speakers for being with us today, and we hope you found this session interesting. From all of us here at Sedell, Thank you and goodbye.